Hi, everybody. Welcome to another mastery interview session here. And I've got the great Sandy Williams now from Florida, but she came from a whole other place before and <laughs> turned her business to something really big. So I'd like to introduce you to Sandy. Sandy, tell them a little about how you started in this business of real estate. Um, well, I actually, when I first started, Bill, I was working as a urban planner for the city of for the city of Indianapolis, I have a master's degree in urban planning. And I started thinking, oh my gosh, I can do better than this. So I just started doing residential real estate through working and knowing people in my past jobs at the city. I ended up with the Fannie Mae contract for downtown Indianapolis. It was a demonstration project in the inner city at that time. Wow. And uh, we were the first ones to go in there and actually revitalize now, which is a very popular area of downtown Indianapolis. And when, uh, when we saw what was happening with the real estate market and the big crash, I already had a relationship with Fannie Mae. I was doing bank foreclosures in Indianapolis with Fannie Mae and a lot of other big banks. And I knew, hey, look, uh, we're going to see something really bad in Florida. And I thought, well, I'm moving to Florida. So um, the first year, I ran both teams. I ran an Indianapolis team and I ran a Miami team. And I closed about 500 houses that first year. Running REO, both teams. REO deals, right? REOs, yeah. And so I thought, you know what? Have you ever been... Uh, like getting in a boat where you have one foot in the boat and one foot on the dock. And if you don't make a decision pretty soon, you're going to end up in the water. Right. Right. And so I decided, you know what, it's time to sell my book of business in Indianapolis and let's move to Miami. And I ran REOs in Miami all the way down to the first key, all the way up to Fort Lauderdale for 12 years. Wow. And just, I know that we never even discussed this, but what do you think the number of sales in those 12 years, total number of unit sales. Do you have any idea at all? Yeah, 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 I do. Um, the, I would say uh, for the, the 12 years, we probably did close to uh, about 1,500 homes. 1,500 homes in 12 years. Okay, that's awesome. And so just so um, people could understand, what is an urban planner? What does an urban planner do? Well, urban planning involves real estate and land use. Okay. So what we do is we are the ones that set your zoning, set where your subdivisions are going. Everything that happens with real estate development comes through um, a, a city or a county for land use. Yeah, and what did you study this in college? Were you like, yeah. a, what, what yeah, kind of have, degree is that? Um, I have a master's degree in urban planning and I have an undergrad degree in urban policy and management. Wow. So you took that experience, saw what it was there, and then brought it to Miami, which is a little more hipper, right? You know, you get to dance your way through, <laughs> through deals. Yeah, yeah. To say the least. at least in salsa, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then what was interesting, um, you decided to, uh, you had enough. Yep. And then what happened then? You know why it was, uh, I call it the 305, right, Bill? So I lived in the 305, as Pitbull would say, yeah. uh, for 12 years, and I did a heck of a business. And you know what? It was just time to slow it down. And so I didn't leave Florida. I just went to the West Coast. So now I'm in Sarasota. So, and then um, uh, from that um, experience, you have decided, hey, I want to do it a little bit different. Uh, uh, you want to do it your way and work your way. And you thought, okay, I'm going to do this a little bit different. Tell them how you started to do it different because you, you planned this. Yeah. So to, to move because you couldn't, you still had a little bit of business there, but you couldn't just drop everything and go across the other side of the state. Yeah. I mean, I have, um, I have relationships in Miami. Um, you know, when you're doing 12 years of business, you, you, you have good cl clients that you want to keep and some good banks. So uh, together, you and I came up with a plan yeah. to let's look at the next 12 months. And you know what the beauty of real estate is that most people don't realize is that you, you are your business and you can pick it up and move anytime you want. And 
if you were an employee of a corporation, unless that office has a place for you, you can't do that. So believe it or not, real estate is an awesome pick up and go wherever you want. So this was my third move in real estate. Wow. And um, so then you, you moved over to the other state. You were um, saying, you know, I, I want to capture because um, tell them what the snowbird, a little bit about what happens in your market. Because, you know, if you're not familiar with Florida, it's a whole different ball of wax over there. You got the snowbirds. So explain how you started to capture this because, you know, we said, hey, Fizbo's an expired. So let's keep that going. And then you said, okay, I want to mix it up and, 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 and utilize something else with that. Well, the perfect thing about it is that I live in a beautiful place. I mean, people from all over the world come to Sarasota, Florida. We're right on the Gulf Coast, three barrier islands. I, Siesta Key is one of the best rated beaches in the United States. So what we did is, what I did is, first I knew my demographics. So where do everybody come from, right? Where do my buyers come from? Well, my buyers and a lot of the sellers that are here are actually from the Midwest. So, and I, I studied them, I studied their age brackets. So I basically got started um, pulling up old expireds, right? So we are, we were just in a rebound and in the point where anybody that was going to sell now could actually make some money. So go back five years on those expireds or go in your MLS and look at the people that bought in the down market because that at that time our market was rebounding enough for somebody to make a great profit mm. and start calling them and mailing them and knowing your other demographics start writing as a consumer for them that's interesting so uh what i wrote i wrote down the word when you were saying this this was strategic this isn't like i just moved you you took your uh, your planning mindset and said, okay, we're going to target this group. You hit the five years of old expires I wrote down, uh, MLS. So you used the tools. And let me just say, it wasn't like it was really expensive to do what you had for the research right now. That was... Oh, yeah. No. I mean, the, the research was easy because, I mean, anybody that bought... 10 years ago, you can pull up 10 year old sales or five year, go into the tax record, pull them up, know that a lot of them are going to live here and some aren't, right? You're going to have investors, you're going to have people from all over the United States or, or the world, really, and uh, start going after them because they're, you know, investors buy for profit. And so they've held it, they've depreciated the asset, now it's time to sell it. And uh, maybe even um, to uh, 1031 exchanges. Right. Things like that. So we got a little bit strategic in that and started off a plan that today, uh, I, and that I basically took that year off in order to do that. But I'm in my third year and I'm, I'm busier than I want to be. Yeah. How many people can say that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's beautiful. So let's look at um, the information that you receive with the FISBOs expires and uh, you kept at that and then you said, okay, I need to pull people in um, from out of town. And this is what I thought was really neat how you did that. So let's talk about how your blogging came into the mix of your marketing. So I first started off with a pay-per-click campaign with Google. And I hired a very experienced person to do that. And she came back to me and said, you are in one of the hardest markets for Google pay-per-click than I've ever seen in the United States. And I thought, oh, oh, that's great. What am I going to do? So I thought, well, if I can't, I, I'm not going to beat out. I'm not going to beat out the big boys, right? You're just not. And you're not going to beat out the entire brokerage firm. Well, what you can do is beat them out on organic material because big brokerage firms and we all know realtor.com and all of those big.com consumer search websites are going to pay to be in first position with Google for typical search like homes for sale next to the water in Sarasota, 400 to 500,000. They're going to own that. But what they're not going to own are the problems that people search for. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So or, explain what organic 
means versus pay-per-click, just for those that may not know. Organic is free. So oh, organic, I, I mean, obviously nothing is free, right? right? But this is not paid for with money. This is paid for with your time. So time is money. We all know that. And we have an opportunity cost for what we do in our business. But uh, somebody like me could get, I got in with zero money and started making, I'm not kidding, close to six figures on blog posts. Yeah, so what was cool, you were, um, when you went to the expireds, you actually had, you, you could tell them, listen, I've got things coming in. Right. I so sell your house, Fizzbuzz, I can sell your house. So you made this blogging thing, besides getting the leads from that, you also had credibility going into talking to these expires and Fizzbuzz. Yeah. Can you imagine going to a for sale by owner or an expire? Because I mean, we all know that as agents, the FISBO will say, well, if you bring me a buyer, I'll pay you, right? Or well, why didn't you show my home when it was listed for sale? I mean, these are typical lines that we always get, right? So what are you going to do? Well, through blogging, when people, I run different I, I run different offers, right? So I have a blog, how to buy condos in Florida, download your checklist. Um, you know, I run campaigns like that. So people literally give me their names, their email addresses and their phone numbers in order to get that information. I don't get a massive amount, but I, what I do get are people that are really serious about buying. So can you imagine going to a FISBO's house or, or an expired and say, I know you're in the condo market, for example. Uh, I have 50 people that literally have given me their names, their email addresses, and their phone numbers. And before your house or your condo even hits the market, I am going to call them up and invite them to exclusively tour your listing through my website and my 3D cameras as if they were here. I mean, and once that's done, then I'm gonna put you on my virtual website and, and of course everyone else, but I have the ability to show them what separates me from another agent that's just going to say, oh, yeah, when we list your property, it goes on ABC, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. I mean, everybody has that. If you have the feed to the MLS, you are no different than anybody else. But if you're like, see these people? I mean, and I don't share who they are, but I'll bring like five or six and I'll black out some of their contact information and say, look, these are people that literally signed up for one of my products or offers within the last six months. It's amazing. And, and you know, uh, yeah. can you see these people just going, I just want what you have. I could see the, the expired exactly. going, ah, you know, salivating yeah, for that right. information. I, you know, I can't guarantee that one of those people on my list is going to buy them, but it sure is better to have people that were willing to give you their personal information to reach out to them. Because what I found is since I'm in a, a, a really nice vacation area, it may not be them, but it might be one of their friends or their mom and dad or somebody that's like, Oh no, I was looking for my brother. He's ready to move. So it, it but my hit ratio for people that actually buy from that registration is I would say every time, Bill, I put out an ad or an offer, I get a buyer. So what's, how do you, um, let's talk about the mistakes. Cause I think when people think blogging, they go, oh, that's just, you just got to write an article and hopefully someone likes the article. But what I've learned from you is that everything is strategic. I don't think you do anything that's not strategic, to be honest with you, now that I know you for <laughs> so, so long. So how do you become better? You know, obviously this is a long conversation, but in the short version, what are some of the mistakes people are thinking what blogging is? Well, let's just take away the fact that you do not have to be a good writer. Okay. So actually I prefer you not to be a good writer because Google wants you to write for an eighth grader. That is the person or the level of writing expertise that you should have. The longer the sentences, the worst your grade is going to be with Google. They are looking for an eighth grade education writer, somebody that's going to explain it, 
short and simple and be to the point. The most important thing is that you structure your articles so that they are logical in order and that you have some search engine optimization. And what I mean by that is keywords, right? So for example, how to buy a condo in Florida. Obviously, we're going to explore the different areas, line them up, and then feed that about buying a condo in Florida and not just using the repetitive words, but really telling a story because that's what Google's looking for. So uh, what's, what I think is so great about this is that when people typically go to Fizz when expired, it's just you're talking the same language. You're coming in saying, listen, man, I got this sack of leads. And, but, and then you've perfected it because you're, um, you're writing articles. Like how often should you write an article compare, you know, a, a blog and then where do you post it? Um, you know, in the beginning, I think I would never tell someone, look, you got to write a blog every week. You could, and that would be great, but we all still sell real estate, right? So, um, and you do not want to buy canned content, meaning don't buy those articles online because they're selling them to everyone and you're basically watering down your article, which would hurt you worse than you just writing something by yourself that is not that good. Believe it or not, don't pay for articles. Don't do it. Don't recycle them. I know like a lot of brokerage firms have websites that, or um, have articles the agent can borrow and put on their website. It'll kill you. Don't do it. It's the worst thing you can do. There's no uniqueness to it. There's no... no nothing there. So you're just in the, it's almost like being an agent going to physical and expired with the same script, right? Yeah. So yeah. there's no so, Yeah. So, I mean, one of my favorite things to do is ask the physical or expired, Hey, do you have an idea of where your buyer is going to come from? <laughs> where do you think our buyers are coming from for your house? Do you think they're coming on the internet? I mean, Mr. Seller, do you use the internet for anything? I mean, heck, I don't know right now. Even my mom, who's 85, has a Facebook account. So my mom is on the internet. So you, that question, and remember, we ask questions that we want to know the We already know the answers to, right? right? Yeah. So they're going to say, yeah, if chances are, I'm like, do you think they're going to come from the internet? You think we might have a possibility that somebody's going to see your house online. And would you be surprised to know that at least 80% of the buyers are online shopping for homes before they even look for an agent? Yeah. Yeah. And then go to go. That's according to NAR. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? So, so the, the articles that you're writing just to keep this thing moving at a, at a consistency, um, what are some of the things you have to do consistently to make this work? Because we talk about you got to prospect consistently, you got to get on that phone, and then you got to do this because you want to keep those leads coming in. I mean, you're the agent that can list it and sell it. Yeah, yeah, because my job is to beat Zillow. So, and I, I can, I can beat Zillow if I'm the first to put it on my website, if I'm the first to, to, own that address, um, I have a better chance of, and doing a YouTube video, I am probably going to be at Zillow on my own listing. It's amazing to me how well you've done and how, um, I don't know if it's easy, but I think how less complicated it seems to do this than you would think, but it's always this unknown. So when you're looking right. about you know, um, how you start. So if someone wants to do this, um, where do they start? How do they start to make well, it happen for them? You got to have a website and I always, and it doesn't have to be expensive first of all. So nobody needs to sell you a big fat website with a bunch of stuff. Um, I have a WordPress website and the reason why I do is that it's, it's free software and the majority of people use WordPress. And the only reason why is because it's user friendly, kind of, I mean, compared to some other code right. that you would have to do. And then think about, think about questions that your buyers have asked you in the past. Think about questions that your sellers have asked you in the past, or put your consumer hat on and think of what would a buyer ask about my area? So like, does anybody ever ask you what closing costs are in your neighborhood or in your, in your state? Um, I just finished 
example, I wrote, I call it a beast of burden, but I wrote an entire blog post. It was close to 3,000 words on what are buyers closing costs in Florida. And I just finished it um, Friday. And I thought, you know, I, I need to give it some Google juice and some Google love. So I threw it on Facebook, 35 bucks for an ad, know my demographics. Three hours later, the phone rings. Hey, I saw your ad on Facebook. I saw you on Facebook. I read your article. I'm flying in this Thursday. I want to buy a house. I'm looking at new construction, but I haven't signed anything. So I already know what article they've read. Oh. Um, will you represent me? And so I, $450,000 buyer today, and she's coming in on this, this week on Thursday. Wow, that's great. And can you get listing leads from this also? Oh, absolutely. Depending upon what you're offering, right? So one of my big articles are what is seller closing costs in, in Florida? And I'm in either first or second position on the first page of Google. Well, my, one of my offers in there is want to know how much your house is. So people fill out that to get like their estimate and they have to give me their name, obviously their address, right? Right. And their email address. So bam, I just got it. I got two leads yesterday. And, and, and my question says, are you thinking about selling? And they have to type in the guy literally typed in, I'm thinking about selling. Um, so of course he went into a funnel, but I literally sent him an email and said, you know, that estimate is an estimate until I see your house. It's a guesstimate. The guesstimates are estimates. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. So, um, so getting the, WordPress site was a step, uh, you know, like what if you're not a good writer at all? I mean, how do you like, uh, you know, what do you do? I mean, cause um, sometimes people can't even think of what to write, but you said something important a long time ago. I just want to make sure if you wanted to find out what topics you would go down to the end of Google, how to explain that. Yeah. So this is really easy too, and it's free. So there's two free so There's two free things. First one is um, called Keywords Everywhere. Keywords Everywhere, if you have Chrome, uh, you can download that, it's free. They even give you a tutorial on it. And you can literally type in the search bar of Google a, a topic and it'll tell you this is how many people are searching for it, this is how much this keyword is worth. And remember, you're gonna get it for free because you're gonna write about it. Um, and then if for some reason it, it, it's not coming up, which sometimes it doesn't, go down to the bottom of the Google and it'll say, it helps you. It says some people search this term in this way or look at it this way. So chances are, if it's on the same topic, topic you wanna use all those keywords anyway. So you're gonna weave in that whole story with all those keywords in your story. And that will give you the story. direction of where to go. I mean, you'll have an idea of where exactly. to go and not wasting time because what you think is uh, a hot topic may not be at all because you're now, because, you know, you look at the search criteria and you go, this is not what people care about. Right. That's really, really right. neat. So, and so the more specific you are, the better, the better off you are. More specific on what? Well, I did, I did one on how to buy a condo in Florida. And the reason why I did that is I have business partners because I've been an agent in Florida for so long. Chances are I know someone in the state of Florida that if they contact me, if they're not on the Gulf Coast where I am, I'm going to refer that out. But hey, I just got a nice referral check for writing a blog post. So you can still make a couple grand just by writing an article and sending it off for a referral. But if you're in a really big city like Charleston, where you know, for example, people are searching that, then how to buy a condo in Charleston, what to look for, what are flood zones in Charleston, things like that, that are going to be uniquely characteristic of your neighborhood. If you were in Nashville or next to like Smoky Mountains or a huge state park or whatever, that people really want to be there, that they're going to search for that. That's that's where you want to start. That's beautiful. And when that lead comes in, just I'm curious of what you say. So the lead uh, that you get will have name, address, and a phone number, which is, you know, they're, if they're serious, they're putting that information out. So now you got a hot lead, right? And you give them a call and they're either, most of the time they're out of town because you're in a resort area, right? They're usually calling from right. out of town. How do you close them for your appointment? What do you say to them? 
Well, you know, Bill, and we always talk about this. My motto is fear of loss is right. a greater motivator than opportunity to gain. So, um, for example, somebody that's calling about a, an estimate, it's like, look, this is a guesstimate. I don't want you to lose money. I would rather take a look at your house or talk to you about your improvements because if you're using this guesstimate, you could be leaving a lot of money on the table. Now, that's going to motivate somebody to say, wow, or maybe you shouldn't sell. Who would ever, whatever realtor would say, Hey, and that's just a reverse. I mean, I've told people, look, you don't want to sell. No, 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 I really do. So, um, you know, you're kind of weaving it in, but also finding what their true motivation is. Yeah. Isn't it cool? So, uh, and, and then you, uh, now these people, just to clarify, they're out of town. This is a second home market. So their house is in your backyard, but they live in some other state. And, what, and you also calculated where majority of these people are coming from, right? When you looked oh. at the numbers, where, are they, where did you, how did you find out where these people came from in your area? License plates. License plates. Okay. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I mean. Open your eyes and take a look. I mean, every season I see all the um, semi-transports coming down. But I also, when I run ads on Google, or I mean, when I run ads on Facebook, I, I, it'll break down the age group of who hit it, uh, where, if is it a man or a woman, and where are they coming from? And so that, it can actually tell you, um, I, well, I've got one right here. So I ran that little $35 ad. Um, the majority of my buyers, and I was surprised, the majority of those people were looking in North Carolina. Now, I threw that one in because I started seeing license plates coming in from there, and I thought, wow, I would have never thought, North Carolina, you'd want to move to Florida. But right now, um, the majority of people for that ad are from North Carolina, and then we go into the Midwest where it's cold, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Um, Michigan. I thought Minnesota because, you know, I don't know about you, but I am not a snow person anymore. Yeah. But yeah. I had very few Minnesotans. So, you know, it's like one of those that you have to play around with it, be observant. I think your demographic market will change um, and it's ongoing. But I also know that since I'm in a resort area, who has more disposable income? Yep. Yep. People whose kids are out of college, right? So right. that there's a certain age for who you're going to go after, right? Yeah, so yeah. If, you're out, if you're running a product, for example, USDA, no money down, uh, that demographic is probably a first time home buyer. And um, when you look at the sources, because you know, we're saying this is one of your ways of doing what you do. How much time do you spend on this besides you know, all the other different ways that you get business? How much time does it take to do this per week? Uh, I'll probably maybe four. Four hours. Four hours. Four Not four days, four no. hours. Four hours. Um, uh, if I'm writing a really big blog post, uh, I'll break it up, obviously. And right now, Bill, I am looking at opportunity cost of time um, because I, I know people might not believe me, but you know that one of my blog posts can make me $70,000 in one year, uh, in two years time. And that's the beauty about blogging. It's a gift that keeps on giving. I mean, last year I wrote a blog post, $65,000 in commission. I made off that post Wow. this year. So far we're in, you know, we're halfway through the year I have made, I'm writing a deal, uh, right now it's about 800,000. So think of that one. The 450000 coming in um, this Thursday, and then um, about another, I'm going to say 800000 So $1.6, uh, $2 million, $2.5 million off of an article, one article. Yeah, and, now, and, and it stays write, on. Yeah, it so there on. you go. One article over a two-year period, probably mm -hmm. close. To sixty, hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So if I wrote you a check for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, would you write a would you write an article, yeah. or would you pay would you pay a, a content writer or a blog somebody that's well? Now this is where we get really concerned. 
somebody that actually can demonstrate SEO and understand if you're going to write, if you're going to hire them, not just, oh yeah, you know, my biggest beef about people trying to sell me things is that if you don't know what you're buying, you could be taken advantage of. Right. So you got to know a little bit about what's really neat also is that with the time that you're spending along everything else, and we always talk about it being into four or five different sources, this is an easy mix to add. And if you add the other sources to your 150,000, I mean, the sky's a limit. I mean, really, when you think about it, you know, you don't, you just don't, I don't think, you know, you could put your eggs in one basket, but for you and the market changing, because I think you're constantly looking at the market and seeing what's going on. Um, and especially people at the resort market. So, um, I think it's great. And I thought this was a great um, topic for people who are just, you know, wanting to create a mix and not spend a lot of money. Because let's just say in all the investments that you've had in this, how much do you think you spend when you first started this? Because, uh, you know, how much did you spend in getting this thing set up? Well, the most expensive thing is going to is going to be your is going to be your website. So, an average website, if um, you want to get started with some content and have some IDX, which means that's the search, you know, how people search right. for homes, um, it's going to run about nineteen hundred mm -hmm. bucks. Uh, but your articles are free. So, my basic. I have a subscription to Shutterstock, right? So Shutterstock, for anybody that that's where you get pictures, pictures. that you're not copyright infringing on. You actually can use those for a subscription. What does that cost me? I think like 50 bucks a month, maybe. Um, and that's about it. I mean, honestly, other than the website, you don't need, until you get up to the point where I am, you don't need all the fancy tools. Now I have analytics. I can tell you, I have people from Australia hitting my page, Ireland. I mean, I can tell you on a given day who searched for what, what they're doing, where they came in, but that helps me on writing content later. But you know what? As we always know, you lead with revenue. So yes, yeah, sometimes you have to have tools first to make money, but you don't have to go overboard. And, and an article, Let's say you wanted to pay a ghostwriter. My ghostwriters are 25 cents a word. A, a $300 article. Well, last time I wrote a $300 article, I made $65,000 on it. Yeah, I think I could take that. <laughs> hey, and what was interesting too is how you got your your um, your web address. I mean, I think sometimes people think that all these great things are taken. Yeah. yeah. You got something that you actually. I think you were amazed. Also, yeah. when you first got it, yeah. tell them about that, yeah, that yeah. webpage. So uh, my web address is sarasotasandy.com. So it was out there. I couldn't even believe it. So um, so obviously my Facebook page, Sarasota Sandy, Twitter page, everything goes with that. And we were branded right across. And who doesn't forget Sarasota Sandy? Now I have my clients when I walk in a room, hey, Sarasota Sandy. Um, and I, well, and I write blog posts for uh, Thanksgiving. Bill, I beat out the Ritz Carlton for their own ad for their own Thanksgiving. I love ad. it. And I had the Ritz call me and go, "Are you Sarasota Sandy?" I'm like, <laughs> yeah, "Hey, we changed our prices at the last minute. We have tons of people calling us from your web from your article. Can you change the price?" So um, I, I, I get my content out before they even get there. So now when I walk into restaurants, it's kind of fun because they're like, I know who you are. It's almost like being a food critic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it great? Uh, so no, you're an influencer. You're becoming an yeah. influencer. Here we go. So yeah. I, Sarasota Sandy, thank you for being with us. This is great stuff. I love what you're doing. I love the way you're combining it with the expires and Fizbos and how this thing actually works in the mix. Great. So how can someone, if they have questions, get a hold of you? Uh, you can email me. My email address is Sandy. So it's S-A-N-D-Y, Sandy at SandyWilliams.com. Perfect. Sandy, this is great. Thanks for the information. Always love what you have to talk about. Uh, it works. You're, uh, you're the uh, proven evidence that this thing works. So thanks for sharing that and uh, hopefully catch you back again on the, on the master's program. All right. Hey, thanks, Bill. Good talking to you. Yeah. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.